Hi, welcome to the next edition of One to One in 20 with Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce. My name is Paul Britton, I'm Chief Executive for the Chamber and today we're talking recruitment and the jobs market with Page Group, one of the largest recruiters in the world. I'm talking to Marcus Johnson, he's Operations Director with Page Group in Reading. We're talking about the furlough scheme, the impact it's had upon the jobs market and the general outlook for the Thames Valley. I hope you enjoy. So hello Marcus, very, very good to see you again. Great. Hi, Paul. Uh, so this is our one-to-one in 20 minutes. This is a, a, a conversation, an interview, perhaps too strong a word, a conversation between you and I about uh, the impact on, on your business, Page Group, um, the sector, and some reflections, uh, perhaps on what we, can, what we can take away as employers. I'm sure it's going to be valuable insight for, for all, of our, all of our members. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, so let me kick off with the first question, because this, this relates to our the Chamber's latest quarterly economic survey, which for the first time in my tenure, um, many of the indicators are actually showing some, you know, just the challenge that lies ahead, both in terms of short-term and, and, and long-term business confidence. Uh, one of the key things in around that is around hiring, and it gives us it gives an indicator in terms of uh, the impact upon recruitment confidence. So uh, you're the expert in this, Marcus. So uh, you know, what, what are you seeing in terms of the impact in your market at the moment? Yeah, okay, Paul. I think, look, furlough as being a double-edged sword for us, uh, I think, from a recruitment perspective. Whilst, obviously, it's useful for cost savings for us, uh, due to the rules being vague, people are nervous about doing any recruitment. So, it's being a double-edged sword. So, on one hand, we're making good cost savings, but at the same time, we're finding decisions are taking longer to make and decisions are being held off, I think, until such time as the furlough scheme comes to an end uh, or indeed uh, employers have to have to contribute far more um, to to the scheme so that's been particularly difficult and particularly around our tent business you know around 40 percent of our overall revenue is in temp revenue temp revenue is obviously for those contractors that aren't employed directly by an organization um, and uh, we found that market has been very, very slow. Um, as a gag, it's very difficult for an employer to justify bringing a heading when they've furloughed um, an employee. Um, what we've seen over the last few weeks, June has been better. Uh, if I think about the Thames Valley specifically, the area I'm responsible, it's been very encouraging. Uh, we delivered our best result in four months. So, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly turning a corner. Um, and people are now looking forward to making decisions on restructures. So we're starting to have conversations with clients around what, how they're shaping their businesses for the second half of this year and really into 2021. Uh, but as I can say, that's not going to make an impact really until probably uh, Q, uh, Q4. Um, we see no V-shaped um, return until after furlough, as I say, in, in October. So I think in line with the, the rest of the economy, people are still working out how to do it. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, I, that's, that, that's, sorry, to, Marcus, that, 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 that expression still working out how to do it. Businesses large and small across sector, you know, before we started recording, we're talking about, you know, this is, this is, un, this is uncharted territory for, for everybody. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, Page Group's been around for forty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And you know, we we usually have sorry, Paul, to interrupt. We usually we have a we have a very very good model on what to do after a downturn, as most companies do. You tend to bounce back. Um, you know, if you've got good systems, processes, structures in place, and I'm sure we will do uh, across my region. If I speak specifically about region, however, it, you know, if there's a second wave, uh, if confidence continues to be an issue into the autumn and winter then 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 obviously that can be an issue to us i suppose the, 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 there are positives to come out of this horrendous situation i would say that you know we've been able to do most of our jobs most of the key elements of our job all of our consultants all of our managers all of our directors all of our key board members online from home it has not interrupted the business flow and that has to be uh, a, a real positive so from client meetings to interviews to completing processes without face-to-face -face meetings, um, uh, this this has happened, um, and you know, like I say, from a permanent perspective, 
um, we, we'd be making offers without meeting somebody face to face. I can only speed things up and improve productivity when things are improving the, in, the, in the sort of short to medium term. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've, we've talked about, you know, that's, that's a great insight into perhaps an, 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 an employer's perspective. Let's 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 look at this through the contrarian point of view. You know, let's look at this from the employee perspective. What what are you seeing from your candidate base now? What's the sentiment like uh, at the moment? Are folks looking to move on? Are they is conference structure they're looking to, to, to sit tight? What they got? What's the expectations of, of employers right now? For example, yeah. There's always a bit, there's always a, a mix. Having been through three recessions, at this being the worst, clearly. Um, You've got those candidates that are are, are key to their organisation and they will always be key and they'll always be employable. But they, their current organisation really wants to keep hold of them. So they'll do everything they can to make sure they look after them. So from a recruitment perspective, when the market does start to increase, it becomes more difficult to attract those employees. So it's important we are we are working with those employees, understanding what your employee value proposition is. And that's what candidates are looking for now, more now than ever. Why would I leave? It isn't just financial, it's all the other key areas of, of, uh, of, of employment. Um, so I would, see, I would say that most felt that furlough in some cases has been handled really badly. We've heard cases of organisations making employees redundant. And then having to go back to them and saying, "Oh, I made a mistake. You can now be furloughed," and 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 just losing losing um, uh, will there, a goodwill there. I think the other element is it was all done by some some did it by text or mass online meetings rather than taking the time out to do it individually. Again, you know, there's been some bad feeling um, uh, from that perspective. Um, you're at the front line fact, of this. You're, you're at the front line of this, so you're you're hearing. You know, you're going to hear these, you know, the, the, the darker stories where things haven't gone to plan. Yeah. What about what about the best practice? What, what are you saying to your um, your clients around uh, managing expectations around um, you know focusing on the needs of their their staff right now? What what are you seeing as good practice, and what um, what are you encouraging your clients to do? So I would I would suggest that training is the key. So I think when we, when we, when we, uh, uh, not just ourselves, but organisations that we're talking to, we talk very much around making sure people were still engaged and didn't feel they're being furloughed in waiting for redundancy. It was continuing to upskill and continuing to train them. And we found that many of our, our key clients in our, in, our, in our area are training. And now starting to train, not just in general terms around key elements of, of the company or, or, or their role, but also in their market, in the area that they're responsible, what their expertise is, giving them further training. Uh, our understanding and our clients' understanding is that you can still train employees. Um, so it's important. That's been, supposedly, uh, I suppose, the, the one key thing that has, that has come out of, of this. Uh, and from a furlough perspective, is that not just letting them stay, sit there for five months um, without any contact, you know, finding reasons for them to get involved in um, social activity online, whether that be quizzes, whether that be team drinks, whether that be chef evenings, it could be anything, just to make sure they're a part of what's going on, excluding uh, the sort of work element uh, day to day. And what about you mentioned the, the, the furlough scheme? Let's just just focus on that because there's there's the new flexibility that we've seen provided by the Majesty's government now by the Chancellor set out around um, bringing team members back into the business for part time. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I, you mentioned the training there being a critical focus. Are are, are your clients? Um, are, are we as a business community using enough of that flexibility? Do you feel? I, I, are you feeling we, we're, we're providing enough opportunity for training and, and, and progression or, or training and, and support during during uh, during this time when folks are furloughed? I think there's more I think there's more as a as a business community we can do. I think it's there has been a shock to the system. We've all felt it. We and a, a, a large selection of our clients feel that we have been a victim of the market even those most hardened um, businesses who have got good systems, good process, good brand, 
have been knocked sideways by by the pandemic. Yeah. So now we're hearing organisations very much talk about not being a victim of the market anymore, and really now starting to think about um, right, what do we need to do? And, and and back to your original point, yes, that does include bearing some of the cost of trying to bring people back on a part-time basis to start turning that wheel again and um, to start talking to your customers again who have also been sat dormant I suppose for, for three months yeah. uh, and to be first out of the blocks and you know what I'm hearing from my client base from our client base is um, look they want to be first out of the blocks the first out of the blocks are the ones that we're, we're all on the same we're all on a level playing field now in all of our sectors you know, and it'll be the, those those organisations that we've spoken to that are first out of the block, speaking to their customers, speaking about the future and planning for 2021. And what we can't do, and what our clients are saying this, is we can't just have people land on January the 1st, 2021, when the shareholders are expecting growth or business owners are expecting yeah. improved performance. And, yeah. and that's what's coming through. Uh, and, and we're still yet to see the impact on, on them. On the marketplace, we know that, but I think experience tells us that um, you know the best people are are very hard to find in this part of the world. And as you as you started by saying, um, employers are, are working incredibly hard to adapt and to to provide training and support so that um, when the when the heat out of this situation does cool a little, that we're in a position these people can can do what they're they're good at. Yeah. Um, without being just say you know a, a victim of, of of the pandemic right now, I think that's that's a, that's an interesting e expression and one that because um, we've got to keep it's about keeping energy, isn't it as well? And I think that I've, I've, our board have encouraged uh, the chamber to take this approach as well. We've, we've um, continued to keep um, Rome's team members on 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 the front line to support our members, but we've also been very aware that. Um, <laughs> This is this this isn't a sprint, yeah. and there's there's going to be a recovery. There's going to be a recovery time. So, um, you know, just as much focus upon keeping that energy level up as there is upon short-term performance. And I've heard that reflected in every conversation I've had with leaders across across the region. I do believe that's that's the right way uh, right way forward, and, and to focus on what we can control as well. So. Absolutely, folks, and, and our clients are talking to us about control. We always talk about this, don't we? Good business is about controlling the controllables, uh, having you know, having, and all of them are talking about you know, looking at the structure. You you are probably once in a, in a twenty year cycle where you're able to look at your structures, you know, without without you know revenue being attached to every decision um and so we you know the organizations we're speaking to are taking the opportunity to make sure their business is a fit for the future um uh, well, what's, what's your sense around the, this region specifically it's your it's your patch but you're a global yeah. business and you're, you're going to speak to colleagues across the rest of the uk and yeah and worldwide about you know it's a global pandemic after all how, how are we faring up yeah, I speak to my colleagues around the world, uh, uh, up and down the UK. We are faring pretty much in line with everybody else. Um, so I suppose we're all looking at how far <laughs> backwards we are year on year, but there's still a competition for who's not the worst backwards. If you know what I mean? I think it's. I think it's. I think, you know. Uh, and, and I think a lot of our clients were having really good conversations with them. They're more relaxed. They're at home. They're able to talk a bit freer about what they want to achieve. And, you know, uh, and I think that's what we're basing our success on. It's you know what what type of customer contact with and the Thames Valley. You know, we've been in the Thames Valley for 35 years, Michael Page. So, you know, we 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 know the client base really well. Uh, I think what we're doing better than most regions, I would say, is we're really attaching ourselves as a region, not just as a Michael Page or Page Group business, but to to new to new markets. So whether it's life sciences, whether it's uh, renewable energy and the, and, the, and the positives in that market, it's ensuring as we come out of this, this that we're aware of those markets and invest in some of those markets that are, are our future, are the region's future. Um, and, and we've all had time to reflect on those markets and, and, and build plans around that. You, you, you've already had plans around which 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 of the markets within your, your, your business model are going to, to fare best. Um, you know, over over the, over the foreseeable period, and of course, the pandemic has has either accelerated that 
or it's it's throwing a complete curveball at you. So you perhaps had to ad adapt adapt to that in terms of the teams that you dedicated, the resource you dedicated to it. Yes, uh, I've, I've, had, I've had the opportunity to speak across numbers of sectors and those that are really having to make um, the most difficult decisions as a result of the impact around the hospitality sector or around education. Uh, and yet you've got really bright spots within the education sector. And yeah. then speaking to Sanofi, you know, within the you know, drug discovery market, of course, their main challenge has been keeping up with the level of, of, of production that's been required of required of them. So have you had to, to, to reshape your your sector focus somewhat and of team members been allocated to different sectors? Um, yeah, yeah. To say? Very, very, very good point. Yeah, we, 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 we were doing we were on this. We were on this path as a transformation um, uh, anyhow, but uh, yes, life sciences uh, has been a huge investment. We see that as a major, major growth area, and the Thames Valley is a, an Oxfordshire um, is is a phenomenal area for that, as you're aware. And 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 we uh, have, have a successful team based out of Oxford, uh, looking at that business. Uh, technology is huge. We are growing our growing our technology offering nationally by over 50% and over 50% increase in the number of heads that we'll put into that market to ensure as organizations look to transform their organizations from a technological perspective that we're there to support them. Um, but then your areas like, you know, um, not-for-profit and charities and that whole local council uh, is, is really successful for us in the Thames Valley. We've got a really good offering again, based out of our Reading office and, uh, yeah, we see you know the likes of housing being a, a major a major consideration for us going forward. It's, it's always been a good one, I think, under the current circumstances. Unfortunately, it'll probably continue to 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 to, to, to grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we've certainly reallocated resource, um, and it's giving us a, a you know, like I said, wanting a twenty year ability to really look at every facet of the company and ensure that we've got. Uh, people in place who can be productive. That's the crucial thing. You know, going forward, what we've learned is that having too many heads in one area just puts them under so much pressure uh, to, to deliver good productivity. And also, it, it, it can also uh, deliver bad customer service because they're all trying to fight for the business. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I think, I think we'll find that people have got bigger, better regions supporting niche markets where we can offer real value. Um, yeah, I yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, just before, you know, one of the final questions, I, I had a look over the, the page page group uh, annual reports and some of the work your, your board are doing as well. There's a lot of work in there around um, diversity and inclusion. There's a lot of work in there around um, values. There's a lot of work in this. How is that cascading down through your organisation? And, and are there any, is there, is there any, a, advice that that you've got for other business leaders out there from from page group about um perhaps how we can um use this crisis to perhaps reflect upon how we position ourselves and our values and what we're here to what we're here to do and any thoughts on that i think it's crucial i think you know when i joined recruitment 14 years ago i think you know would anybody have cared about you know 50% of the workforce being female, 50% of the leadership team? You know, would we have done work with the LGBT community and ensuring that we were seen as an inclusive organisation? Would we have looked at disability rights? Would we be talking about unity at Page, which is the BAME um, philosophy that that Michael Page uh, are, are focusing on now? And you know. Um, it's absolutely crucial to the future of our business, of our region. We have to be an open, inclusive business community. Um, and we see what certainly within our, within our Women in Page um, uh, scheme, that has had a major impact uh, across the company. Uh, we've achieved all the targets uh, in terms of leadership of, of females within our organization. Uh, Unity at Page has been um, uh, been phenomenal. The LGBT scheme, Pride at Page, has been phenomenal. We are supporting other organisations on their journey on this, and we've won awards through Stonewall. And you know, it is mega. And I just remember when it first came in, thinking, "What benefit will this will this have?" It was clearly, I believe, they were the right things to do. But actually, you know, from winning business to just 
employing consultants into our organisation, they feel it's a safe place to be where you can be yourself. And that is, and that is, I suppose, my local mantra. Uh, it's the mantra across the across the UK. You know, be yourself. Um, and uh, I, I, I'd, rec- I'd recommend to, to chamber members that in this, it's um, Steve Ingham, isn't it? Your uh, Steve Ingham, the CEO. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you, you can see this the what he's um, setting out as the values for the organisation, and I think. Uh, um, I'd, I'd recommend to, to businesses out there to, to have a look at what he's saying and what, you, what he's doing within your organisation. So, uh, I, look, I've, I've, I think we've got time for one more question, and, and that's more of a personal reflection for you. Uh, as I've asked this uh, of all the, 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 the leaders within the organisations I've had the chance to speak to, and that is a, a reflection upon what you've seen as the most important part of your role during the, the pandemic that, that might have surprised you in some way. Um, or, or, or something that's, that's that stands out for you in terms of what the ask for, of you in your position has been. I think I think you might have found this uh, this poor when the when the pandemic pandemic first first came about and we were all told to work from home. I, I at no stage thought that it was going to be uh, a bed of roses, uh, but I didn't expect to, to expect it to as be, be as busy as it has been. Um, it has been it has been full on. Um, uh, learning in some ways as we go, uh, learning how to manage a group of managers remotely who are used to being in one place with a team, uh, used to understanding their drivers, their motivations, whether they're having a good day, a bad day, you know, all the things you can you can you can understand being with people face to face. I think I think you know being a sales director, being a, uh, a chief entertainer, uh, I've got down here. Being a therapist, um, as people have come through the various challenges um, in in there, and all of it, I have enjoyed, and I've enjoyed watching my leaders learn. As I remind them, this is a once in a lifetime, I hope, uh, challenge, uh, and one that uh, I, I can safely say, hand on heart, that I think Michael uh, Page Group, and I wouldn't say this isn't believe it, have handled this pandemic exceptionally well, which has allowed me to handle it well with with our people that's around expectation of results that's around flexibility in terms of teams and and the way we use technology it's it, it's being uh, it's being a challenge but but one i think that will make me if it's put a better leader in the future i think that's a great way to finish marcus thank you very much for your time um let's hope that uh, we're all back in the uh, back in the workplace sooner rather than later. Um, but there's been a, a huge amount of insights that I know that our members will find very, very interesting. So thanks again and, um, and give my regards to all of your team as well. Thank you, Marcus. Excellent, you too, Paul, thanks.